Merry Christmas to each of you, and it's such a delight to gather together on this Christmas morning to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our call to worship, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we behold his glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Lord Jesus, we thank you that indeed you did, be, you did come into our world, taking upon yourself flesh. God, moving into our very presence in order to bring us into your holy presence. We open this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our order of service continues as printed there in your bulletin. Let us pray together the prayer of confession of sin. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. And let us humbly kneel or bow and make confession unto God, imploring his forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ. O God, our Heavenly Father, I confess unto thee that I have grievously sinned against thee in many ways, not only by outward transgressions, but also by secret thoughts and desires, which I cannot fully understand, but which are all known unto thee. I do earnestly repent, and am heartily sorry for these my offenses, and I beseech thee of thy great goodness to have mercy upon me, and for the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord to forgive my sins, and graciously to help my infirmities. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, forgives us all our sins. As a minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you who do truly repent and believe in him, the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. On the other hand, by that same authority, I declare unto the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence, God has not forgiven their sins and will assuredly visit their iniquities upon them if they turn not from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Christ ere the day of grace be ended. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's please stand together and share the peace of the Lord. Our introit is printed there in the bulletin this Christmas Day morning. Let us read that together responsively. 
Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, O sing unto the Lord a new song. The Lord be with you. Let us continue to pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the new birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free, who are held in the old bondage under the yoke of sin, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Please be seated. Our epistle lesson, which is also our sermon text this morning, is from Hebrews chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. It's printed there in your bulletin as well. Long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, When he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds, and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions." And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits? sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. Here ends our epistle lesson. Our psalm is Mary's song, the Magnificat. And let us read that together responsibly. And Mary said, My soul exalts the Lord. For he has had regard for the humble state of his bondservant. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. And his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humble. He has given help to Israel his servant in remembrance of his mercy. Here ends our psalm. Our gradual reading this morning, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness he has openly shown in the sight of the heathen. Hallelujah, alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us worship and bow down. Alleluia. Holy Gospel lessons from the Gospel of John, the third chapter, beginning with verse 16. (laughs) 
reading in Jesus' name. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Here ends our gospel lesson. For this communion service, let us confess our holy Christian faith with the Nicene Creed, which is printed there in your bulletin. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Before you're seated, take just a moment to greet those next to you. Uh, Thank you. You may be seated at this time. We have come full circle in lighting the Advent candles. And this morning, of course, we light the Christ candle. The word of prophecy from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But as for you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Reading the fulfillment from Luke chapter 2. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. I just want to again warmly welcome each of you here this morning, a special welcome to those visiting with us, and even as I said uh, last night at the services, uh, this, this um, special time, it's, it's um, just so wonderful to see uh, so many who are able to come back home, whether college students or those who uh, had to take jobs far away or moved away and so forth, but to be able to come back home, extended families and friends and so forth, and it's just good to have these times together. Uh, so, so good to see each one of you. And please, if you would, take the friendship folders there and, and sign those and pass them down to those next to you that we might have a uh, record of your participation in worship service uh, this morning. Just want to again say thank you to uh, the Altar Guild and, and Jim Grimm, just all their work in, in putting up all the wreaths and, and uh, uh, all the poinsettias, uh, which are now mostly all downstairs, so that you may take yours um, after the service. Uh, thank you for purchasing those. They brought such beauty to the sanctuary last night and, and la- last uh, Sunday as well, too. Um, so just so many people worked so hard to, to put all those things together, and our musicians, Fred and, and Bob Vogel and the choirs and uh, soloists and instrumentalists and Peggy filling in this morning, and Christy being back with us again, too. That's, that's wonderful. It's great to, 
to worship the Lord Jesus Christ that way. I just want to mention as well that um, on uh, New Year's Eve, we're having a church family gathering. Uh, five o'clock, we're going to have a brief uh, service and devotion time, and then we're going to have a meal together down in the fellowship hall, and there's going to be uh, games and, and all kinds of fun things uh, all evening. You can stay all night. Uh, so we look forward to, to that as well, too. So think about coming to that and invite a friend uh, with you. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, all we need for announcements. I'm going to just call upon Christy at this time to come and, and share with us again for the glory of the Lord.
Our scripture readings have been read already in their entirety by Pastor, but I want to reread our first three verses from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Let's pray. God, we thank you for speaking to us through your Son. Lord, we thank you for the clear message that we receive from him, Lord, the forgiveness of sins through his death on the cross. Lord, we thank you that he was born to save, born to save us lost sinners. We're so thankful for that this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you so much. It's been my uh, privilege and joy to be here um, last night and today uh, in this church. You know, this is all my first Christmas here at Ruthfred, um, and it's just been such a joy to share this with you all. Uh, this is just a wonderful church, and I'm so glad to be here. I wanted to tell you a story about my wife and I. We were uh, on a trip down to downtown Chicago right after we got married, and I couldn't help but marvel at these enormous buildings all along the riverfront or the waterfront um, down in Chicago. To build such dazzling heights would take such architectural skill. And more than a hundred years ago, I found out, when a lot of those skyscrapers were built, the technology was being developed to build the foundations for such huge buildings. There were holes that were over a hundred feet deep that were dug into the ground and filled uh, with cement, and then they would drill all the way down into the bedrock for a firm foundation for these buildings. These uh, foundations then would uphold these buildings that were hundreds and hundreds of feet high. Now, these long cement-filled holes are called caissons, I found out. These foundations are so strong that modern construction companies have a hard time destroying them. If they ever want to demolish one of these skyscrapers, they, have to, um, they actually have to demolish the building but leave the foundation because they don't really have a way to get rid of them. We don't have the ability the builders, then, for the next building, have to conform to the foundations that are already laid, which is mostly unseen to our eyes. Now, architecture shows us the importance of a firm foundation to uphold a great weight. Now, as the caissons uphold so great a weight, our scripture reading this morning tells us of one who upholds an even greater weight. This is the Son of God, who scripture tells us upholds the universe by the word of his power. And yet, like the caissons, which are mostly hidden underground out of sight, much of the power of the Son of God on Christmas morning is hidden to us, as we see only a little child lying in a manger. But we can't be deceived by what we see with our eyes, for by God's word we understand that this child is the Son of God, who upholds the universe. We worship him together this Christmas morning because we know that this baby was born to uphold, to, uh, to sustain, and to give everlasting life to this world. So today in Hebrews 1, I want us to see how God first upholds us in hope, as he did through the prophets in the Old Testament. Next, I want us to see how God upholds us through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. And then finally, lastly, I want us to see how God upholds us through his sovereign rule in our world, in our lives. So first then, looking at how God upholds us in hope. The foundation for hope goes deep into the history of the world, all the way back to creation. Verse 1 of our text tells us, long ago, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Now this passage pretty much sums up our Advent series looking at the prophetic word concerning the coming Messiah. The prophets were those whom God called to bring his word to his people. Now, their words are recorded in our Bible, and we notice as we read these prophetic messages that there's an overarching theme to their message. Repent of sin and prepare for the coming Messiah. Now, just as in the Old Testament, as people who heard the prophets we're called to that first thing, to repentance. 
As we, then, look through the words of the prophets in the Old Testament, we see a reflection of ourselves and our own need to turn from our sins. Just like how the prophet Nathan speaks to you as he spoke to David, as you and I have committed sins of lust and hate. The prophet Moses speaks to you and speaks to me as he spoke to the Israelites, as we bow down to idols, putting our own interests and desires ahead of God. And the prophet Micah speaks to you and to me, as he did to the people of Judah, as we fail to love our neighbor and we turn a blind eye to injustice in the world. But then alongside these calls to repentance, alongside this constant reminder that we would never keep God's law, just like the people in the Old Testament didn't, that we would never love our, love our neighbor as we should, God was still upholding his people with a hope that they would yet be saved. Saved from their enemies, saved from fear, but above all, saved from their sin. Saved from the very thing that separated them, that separates us from God. The prophets called the people to hope and expect a divine miracle that would bring redemption for their sins. They offered hope in something outside of us that would bridge the gap to God. Now, the people of the Old Testament couldn't do enough to get back to God, just like we fail to get back to God on our own merits. So God told us then of a different way. He upheld his people in the hope of what he would do, and that hope was fulfilled 2,000 years ago with the birth of Jesus Christ, which we celebrate today on Christmas morning, We read then that in these last days, God has spoken to us through his son, born in that manger, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. God upheld his people, and he upholds us through hope, and now he upholds us through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Now, as the heir of all things... The Son of God has been given ownership and power over all of creation. Now, this is hard to imagine when we think of the baby Jesus laying there in a bed of hay in a simple cattle stall. What a strange way for the heir of all things to be born. And over the course of Jesus' life, his life of humility would continue. And his life would end in a most humiliating way. Death on a cross. But this was all part of God's plan, the hope that the prophets spoke of from the beginning, spoken of by the prophets and carried out in history by Jesus. After Jesus' death, he rose again from the grave by his own power and ascended into heaven, where he sits at the right hand of God the Father even now. Jesus, then, who sits at the right hand of the mighty Father, is the radiance of the glory of God, the author of Hebrews tells us and the exact imprint of God's nature. And Jesus upholds the universe by the word of his power. Though Jesus experienced our weakness in his humility, in his birth, and he took our sins upon himself as he died on the cross, he proves his power over sin and death by reigning in heaven at the side of God the Father. He is God and upholds the universe by the word of his power. And by this power, our Lord Jesus has the authority to declare to us what our scripture this morning calls the purification of sins. So what does purification of sins mean for us now, today? How does purification for sins affect our everyday life? Well, it means we have the hope of eternal life, and we live in such a way. And every day between now and heaven... We live with the knowledge that we are no longer condemned because of our sin. We No longer do we have to search for a greater meaning in life or for what we're created for. We were created to be in relationship with God. And the work of Jesus Christ makes this possible. It was finished at the cross. And we have the joy of spreading this message of the purification of sin to the rest of the world, being upheld then, by the empowerment and grace of our Lord. As we sang in our hymn just moments ago, we proclaim that no one need fear the grave 
as Jesus Christ was born to save. He calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting hall. Our friends and our family and our community, everyone in our world needs to hear that message. There's a crippling fear in our world of the grave, a fear of death, a fear of abandonment that our culture feels. You see it on television, you see it in the faces of loved ones that we know. There's no other alternative to death than Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Son of God, is the only one who upholds the universe, who has power over death, and it is only in his name that one can be saved. It's through him that God speaks to us, and we are called to share that name with others. As our gospel reading this morning tells us, whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but will have eternal life. We have to share that message with others with boldness, to others and to ourselves. We have to cling to Christ, who's found in the word of his power, which is Holy Scriptures, the Bible. If we become separated from this word, we endanger our souls, as it's only through the word that God speaks to us. There's nowhere else we can go. I think of Peter when he's challenged by Jesus, asking when Jesus asks him, if he's going to ever leave him. And Peter says to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Purification from sin is reconciliation with God. And this is a perfect reconciliation that brings perfect peace and eternal life. We have seen in this text then that God has upheld his people in the hope of a coming Messiah, and he upholds us in hope as well. He upholds his people in purification from sin through the Son of God, and we get to share this message with joy. Lastly, then, our scripture shows us Christ upholds us through his rule, as he has sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Jesus, the Son of God, sitting at the right hand of the Father, may seem in our minds sometimes like a distant image, something that isn't relevant to our lives, something that's out there while we're down here. Now, a baby in a manger, that's something that we can understand. Jesus seated forever at the Father's side in heaven, that's a harder image to conjure up. But by God's grace, we don't have to fully get our heads around the full majesty and exaltation of Jesus But I do want us to understand the importance that Jesus being on the throne means for us. He has power over every event in history and every life on earth. And this includes your history, your life, and your future. All of that is in God's mighty hands, in Jesus' hands. So we can have peace this Christmas morning because nothing in our lives is outside of Christ's dominion. We can entrust all of our fears, our hopes, our anxieties, and our pains to the one who upholds our personal worlds. The babe born in a manger, who grew up to be a man, knew his people. And this is the same God-man who rules the universe now. He knows us and loves us, and he upholds us, and we can rest in him. So like great caissons, deep in the earth, that uphold all that would ever be built upon them, our world is upheld by the word of God's power. These words may seem at times in our lives to be distant or hidden, but we have access to them at all times through Holy Scripture. Through Scripture, God spoke by the prophets, and he he upheld them in hope of a coming Messiah, and he upholds us in hope of his love. Through these scriptures, God has spoken to us through the Son of God, born on Christmas morning for the purpose of upholding us in purification of our sins. And through these scriptures, we read, the Son of God continues to uphold us, our personal worlds, as he knows us and grants us strength through his Spirit. This Christmas, may you continue to be upheld, made firm and strengthened by God's love through his word. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus.
God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Dear Lord, on this Christmas morning, we thank you for giving us your Son. And Lord, we also thank you for the many gifts that you've given us. Lord, we return a portion of those tithes in tithes and offerings to you, God, asking that you would use these gifts to extend your kingdom and be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our communion service continues as printed there in your bulletin. Let us please stand together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may be drawn to the love of those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying... Holy art thou, almighty and merciful God. Holy art thou, and great is the majesty of thy glory. Thou didst so love the world as to give your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life, who, having come into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup. And when he had supped and had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this cup is the New Testament in my blood, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, remembering his salutary precept, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to thee, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we beseech thee mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, that these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who partake thereof might be filled with heavenly benediction and grace, and receiving the remission of sins, be sanctified in soul and body, and having our portion with all your saints. Unto thee, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, world without end. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Things are now ready. Congregation may be seated. I invite you to come to the chancel rail to receive Holy Communion this morning. You need not be a member of Ruth for Lutheran Church, but you do need to be a member of the family of God, recognizing that Jesus comes to us in a re- very real way, in with and under the bread and the wine. We invite you to come. body of Christ given for you. John, this body of Christ given for you. Terry, this body of Christ given for you. Paul, this body of Christ given for you. Frank, this body of Christ given for you.
Let us please stand together and sing the Nunc Dimittis. Parting peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles, Glory of thy people, Israel. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to thee, Almighty God, that thou hast refreshed us with this thy salvation gift. And we pray of your mercy that you would strengthen us through this same gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. And Lord, we pray especially your healing hand upon Judy Boyd this morning and upon Joanne Salvetti, that you would minister to them and restore them to health. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.